Hello everyone, welcome back, and I hope you enjoy this video. I start all my journeys by looking at the land first. The flight simulator that I use it is a one-to-one -one ratio, and I don't want to be flying forever. So right now we're in Southwest Australia. The first video I did was up in the Darwin area. And we saw a bunch of, uh, well, I found out that it was a national park that had all those scars and cuts. And so that was the first area that we went to go look at. And so we found some stuff there. And I was thinking like, well, there's got to be some stuff down, like, I mean, everywhere, basically, right? And so, yeah, I just started looking for stuff, hoping to find things somewhat similar to this. And that which is in the Northern Territory. You can see how big all those scars went. I mean, these are huge. And I actually found the same kind of stuff, but on a smaller scale, in other parts of Australia. So I really started getting interested and here we are. Those straight cuts that you saw on that massive scale is now on a medium scale. And it just so happens these things are called the canal rocks. And of course it's currently closed, but who knows when this was. And they say it is natural. But... If you take a look, that is pretty straight. If you look at the other natural stuff, it's not a straight line. So you, you've seen in the Northern Territory, those big cuts. Now we go here, medium cuts, but with that one huge line. And of course, natural spa, go figure. Isn't there always a spa where something's weird? This is now a different kind of cut. It looks like it has a border around it. This is out in the middle of nowhere. The whoop whoop. And this is on the coastline. So same kind of cuts you see here, but even smaller. On the left, they have that border. All these cuts looking like diamonds and... I mean, it's uh, this is like the coastline. This is like several pieces, if not the whole, the whole layer of of land is like that. So now I'm even more interested because I'm seeing those same cut lines, straight cut lines that everywhere, all different sizes. That's about the same size as the canal rocks. And then I see all this weird stuff which I kind of compare it to some natural gas reserves in Texas. Maybe more like the natural gas pumps where they just, they go in a grid, they drill a hole, and there's like a pump or something. That's what I think all that stuff is out there. But regardless, it looks pretty pretty weird and it kind of looks like people just walk from there I don't know anybody from Australia if you know for sure let me know or put it in the comments but it just looks kind of weird from you know even from high above 
So, it kind of, I mean, to tell you the truth, it looks like little explosion marks. And then you got a circle there. That's pretty weird. I say, let's investigate. All right. So, I know that some of these flights can be a little boring, and this video itself is pretty long, but every time I kept looking for something, I kept having more questions, and it would just lead me to a whole nother th thing, subject, I don't know, a whole nother rabbit hole, I guess. Um, so, these super straight lines, I guess, I don't know how long they've been there, but, uh, I think, you know, my stance on old lines, and possibly these are super old, they've been there forever, or these were by a surveyor. And because of the natural gas. To me, in in Texas, it, it looks really crazy. And but, but there's not a, a bunch of super straight lines like this. Uh, there are some, but they're more like in a like a neighborhood pattern, which is also kind of weird. I mean, it looks like that jagged one would be something that we make, and this is just something that. I don't know. If this was older than us, then this was used to navigate for planes, or I guess, uh, because, you know, some of these lines would go over terrain that's kind of hard to walk over, I guess, and then you see the human trails where they go around something, but anyways... This is what one of those things looks like. As close as we will ever get. Here is a super symmetrical coastline. Like very I'm just looking I'm just looking everywhere. I'm I'm seeing things and finding old looking stuff I even found this and it's a perfect match for Orion's belt I said you know this is, the way these three dots are this is just too weird and sure enough they they line up uh, these are pretty big too I just start seeing old structures everywhere could be buried like Maybe even purposely with trees. I mean, a lot of these hills could be pyramids. I mean, Australia is just covered with stuff. And you'll see here that, I mean, it's just... It blew my mind, all the stuff that I started to find. And then I started seeing these mines next to some of the natural parks that I would fly over. And it just kind of started being a common occurrence. This is next to the... That's actually the park that we flew over the first time in Australia. And I did see that. This is... You see, I flew, I flew over it. Um, I deleted the footage, but I guess I still had some still frames. And... I just kept seeing these mines, and they're usually always next to uh, natural parks and like other just really unique areas. And there's a lot of controversy uh, regarding these mines, as far as. You know, the, like they're in a national park, so why mine there? And what if these national parks and these mountains 
or just blown up ca old castles or the old Tartarian buildings and there's trees over just like the Mayans I mean there's pyramids just hidden under trees and then there's these mines next to these interesting looking mountains I don't know it's just something I was thinking about And now because of the mines, I was thinking, well, what about the people? What about the towns? And there was one town in particular that I started researching. It's pretty small. But it's a perfect example of how these towns started. In 1851, a group of shepherds found gold at Specimen Gully. And later on that year, there's a newspaper announcing the discovery. The gold rush had begun and now was focused in this Castle Main area. And the arrival at London's ports of six ships carrying tons of Victorian gold in April of 52 excited Britain. Now, instead of prisoners, they had all kinds of people who wanted to come and basically strike it rich. The interesting thing I read here was the camp was a camp was set up in fifty two for gold miners, twenty five thousand. But uh, the commissioner ordered diggers to excavate, or it's not a, it says evacuate the shanty town, to start building a proper town. But I think they meant excavate the shanty town uh, there's just all kinds of buildings that were just then made so you can hit pause on this to to read further but this is just uh, because of gold like people started finding gold and then all of a sudden these awesome buildings started being made Evacuate the shanty town? I don't. I don't think so. I think it's excavate the shanty town and start building a proper town. But regardless, the fact that they wanted to start another town—that's already a red flag. Like another town, they said start another town. And, um, you know, I mean, this is this is the first jail that they built. This is the the jail that they built. for I don't know how many prisoners but I mean this is something like Alcatraz basically I mean this is actually even built better than Alcatraz but not only that like the courthouse like really you really needed to have a courthouse like that oh you have botanical gardens too you made this little tiny town I mean you came to this little tiny town to dig for gold and 10 years later this castle main market I mean just look at the way this thing looks classical revival structure symmetrical design yeah that's for sure A statue of Ceres, a Roman goddess in Australia. Okay, that's the Market Hall. There you go, Castleman. Yeah, so I mean, you can you can stop this at any time. This is just one article about this town that I found. I use DuckDuckGo, so I don't think I have as much access to many articles as maybe Google or other historical websites, but I'm just doing a simple search because this stuff is crazy, and of course stuff is burned. Of course the stuff gets burned down and then rebuilt. Uh, there's really no need to 
to go much further because all you're going to hear is just a bunch more BS. That it all just con- they all contradict each other. Maybe they're off- they're each off by a year or two, and it's just uh, the information is so muddy. I mean, look at look at that right there. That looks like that could go down for another story, a whole nother level. It's already looking uneven right there. So, like, really, Castlemaine, you needed an art gallery? This is the type of town hall that you needed? Population of 25,000, then 30,000, and then down to 7,000. And it's pretty much stayed there ever since. So people came to that town. With all that, all the 30,000 people, as a just perfect excuse to say, oh, well, we got to build all these big buildings when... Really, you just have to clean them off from the mud. But it just, with the pictures, it just, everything just adds up perfectly. And now there's only 7,000 people for all those awesome structures. I'm sure it's a really great place to live. But did you really need that at that time? I don't think so. There's the proof. I mean, it's... They actually have it in writing. They tell you what these things are. Castle Main Market. With... With a Greek goddess on top. You know. And it wasn't just there. All across Australia. Perth, I, I really don't know how big Perth is. To me, it looks pretty small on the map. And I, this is stuff that you see in France, in Italy, and in Spain. Uh, we got a red brick building here in Dallas. And it's a town hall. Go figure. But look at that. How much mud is that? How much how much mud has been how much soil is covering this planet? Um yeah, this is a rock. I don't know how that happened. This in Perth. I just wanted to throw that in there. And yet another amazing art museum. In 1860. For, I mean, I'm an artist. And I, I don't even see a point in making a gallery that, and a museum that big. Like, really? And then, yeah, sure, of course. Gotta have those mud baths. Or sea baths, salt baths. Whatever. Like, I mean, how how do you even build that out there at that time? (sighs) This is like uh, that one in Salt Lake City. I'm not putting any other pictures up of any other country. This is all Australia. And, yeah, these... Okay, partially demolished in 1917 and then completely removed in 1920. Remove all the evidence and definitely more than a foot of mud guaranteed. Hmm, that's funny. And we're going to continue to Sydney. Founded in 1835. But yet, did you see all those buildings back there? And then this massive thing? Forget about all those buildings of this massive thing. If it was founded in 1835, that thing should have taken 20 years. Like, it's cookie cutter. These, there are exact examples in, like, Boston, in Turkey. That, no. 
that doesn't look Australian. That's more like it. Australian. Because this is just... They got power. And yet they still drive around with horses and buggies. On these wooden wheels. Look at the stone structure. Look at that curved... I mean, even if you pour concrete like that, they, they have, they are driving around on wooden wheels. They got power lines and transistors, and yet buildings everywhere can look the same. Like there's these exact buildings, probably even here in Dallas, I've seen it. I've never even paid attention to these simple block buildings. Everything wired up. Like, look, look at their antennas back then. And then you see the road peeking from underneath the mud. Like, yeah, I think some areas got hit way harder than others. But, yeah, this reminds me of just of that show. The Westworld. Where people, like, pay money to... To play a part. I mean, maybe even make up their own part. It's like, hey, who wants to come out here? Everything's built. <laughs> look at these, look at all those buggies. First of all, they're all empty. Like, what's up with that? But, yeah, we got these. Oh, come by train. Come out to the whoop whoop. Or go out to the west. And, and be whatever you want. Look at all this. There's a train. There's a train in the middle of the harbor. Of course. I mean, that's, that's high dollar right there. Look at the, all these Westworlders right here. They're like, hey... I'm coming for a show. They just, oh my gosh, this is just insane. That looks like that's been operating for a hundred years. I think we need to go further. the gold rush come see Australia where the streets are paved with gold the European settlement of Melbourne was only about 15 years old and no more than a little country town when the gold rush began Ballarat and Bendigo were just sheep farms within another 10 or 15 years Melbourne, Bendigo and Ballarat were boom towns look at that Docks were full of ships bringing people, supplies, and luxuries that the newly rich miners wanted to buy before being loaded with gold to take back to the other side of the world, mostly to the UK. And then, three big gold cities, Melbourne, Bendigo, and Ballarat, became sophisticated centers with very organized streets built to a grid map. Tents and simple buildings were made away for grand sandstone buildings, government offices, and huge stone churches as big as those in Europe. Melbourne St. Patrick Cathedral is Australia's tallest church, and the Sacred Heart Cathedral in Bendigo is the second tallest and one of the biggest. Wow. Y'all did it, Australia. In just 10 years you surpassed European architecture. All three cities were vibrant, places full of shops, hotels, and theaters. The gold city's main streets were wide, tree-lined boulevards, 
and by the 1880s, extravagant parks planted with European trees helped people feel like they were in grand old European cities. <laughs> posh, posh. By the 1860s, Bendigo and Ballarat were more than gold towns. They were important centers of manufacturing with flour mills, woolen mills, tanneries, and factories. Hmm. This sounds like a great place to be during those times. What's the secret? It's finally out as the gold rush begins. Thousands of people flooded to the to Ophir in New South Wales as news spread of Edward Hargrave's gold find in early 51. So, pause this if you like. I'm not going to read everything. I can't be so dramatic all the time. <laughs> but they really want us to believe this, right? Uh, all this gold that you see here, these were just... This is just topsoil. You know, this is just found in the ground. So, all this gold that these... Like, look at this. This is just normal people going out there finding this stuff. They just walked out into the whoop whoop and started digging. But if you notice, it kind of looks all melted. It it really looks all melted. Look. I don't know. Is that how it naturally comes out? <laughs> Maybe what we think how it naturally comes out has always been uh, melted gold from huge towns. This is just these normal people here. These are just these, you know, but anybody came out and now they, if they lay claim, I don't know, what, if you lay claim to a certain area, now you can be a gold mine? But it's just, hmm... It's the melted gold that really gets me. And just average people going out there and just digging and then just finding gold makes me really wish I was actually back there in that time because I'll tell you what, I would be out there all dang day just digging for gold. I don't know. I think there's people who do that now, actually. There's still so much that... Yeah, there's probably people still digging for gold. Here's the increase of the population. From 51 to 90, grew by 10%. Or multiplied by 10, actually. Victorian gold rush would dwarf the finds in New South Wales. And this is as early as we find gold being discovered in Australia so some interesting people here and this was kind of hush hush like somebody what this geologist this geologist showed his friend some small pieces of gold in 1940 in 1844 in New South Wales and he told him to keep it you know, keep it quiet or, or else everyone is going to go out there um, here we have other parts where gold is discovered. Farmers sometimes came to Sydney with gold, selling it secretly to avoid news getting out. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. Uh, gold rush also means chaos, of course. Farmers wanted to protect their sheep from being stolen by miners. That's great. Others just didn't want to share. That's perfectly understandable. I mean, if if I found a bunch of gold somewhere, I wouldn't want anybody to know. I just want to keep digging, like I said. The California gold rush started in 48. And, oh yeah, many people left, left their jobs in the Australian colonies. Yeah, a lot of people left Australia to go to America to get the California gold. Like this one guy... This Edward Hargra Hargraves. Maybe you Australians have, have, have heard of this guy. Edward Hargraves. It sounds like he had a pretty crazy life. Trying to just make it. Went to America. Then told him, hey. Maybe you need to go back to Australia. And so he did. He went back there. He found some gold. And I think he got paid uh, this money. 
10 grand for finding some gold. I don't see how you could sail from Australia to America, especially being as old as he looks. Uh, I don't even want to do it now. I haven't, and, well, I don't think I ever will, especially by boat. Actually, I don't know. I want to get a boat. So, hmm, who knows? Maybe I will travel. This is his friend. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, this is his friend. His friend? Wait a second. His friend looks familiar. <laughs> this is... Is this him? I think this is the beast. Yep. That's a perfect match right there. Alright, well, now we know who that guy is. And... This is how they found the gold, huh? It seems pretty easy. I mean... You just find the walls, right? Look at that. It looks like walls, like st like brick or stone. And I'm still interested in the past and how advanced they were from just gold, just finding gold. Now they're sophisticated. They had this tram back then, and even in the, even in the pic, even in this description, it says the black and white images so tr show tram cars driving next to horse-drawn carts. So they even point out that we are so uncivilized that we are using horse-drawn carts next to these highly sophisticated tram lines. Which you can still see some brick there showing between, you know, through the mud. It's just they, they kind of contradict themselves. They say, oh, look how sophisticated this town is. And it shows the stark difference between horse-drawn carriages and it's like... But yet... All those, not maybe not all of them, but a bunch of those buildings are still standing. Those are all perfectly level. They have withstood, I don't know, earthquakes or bad storms and weather. I mean, to me, if I'm rolling around in a horse-drawn carriage, I'm like just nailing some pieces of wood together. And I'm only using like a stack at a time because that's all my horse can carry. I mean, hmm, full blown electricity, wires going everywhere. But yet a horse drives you with wooden wheels. This just doesn't add up. I don't care. I mean. I don't care what they say in these pictures. See, they even say alongside horse-drawn carts. <laughs> they just think we're so dumb. Well, we're not dumb. We're just waking up. At first, when I was doing my flights, I didn't really pay attention to these mines. I saw mines everywhere. I thought they were kind of boring. And then I saw the mines. These are all the mines in Australia. And I figured we can start the first place I went to. Kakadu. You can see those lines that I flew over. And uh, let's take a look here. We got uranium. That's awesome. That's pretty valuable. And you got uh, uranium, gold uranium oxide. That's 
Pretty sweet. I like gold. What else do we got down here? Uranium gold, uranium oxide. More gold. And then it's just areas are just tons of tons of uranium. Just everywhere. I think every one I clicked for the next few is just nothing but uranium. Now I'm kind of thinking about mines a little differently. Were these mines where towns once laid? I saw a video where a mine looked like it was on an ancient castle. And this looks like that has an old city grid underneath it. I've kind of noticed that too. Not only next to natural parks, weird looking mountains, but I've also been finding city grids, like maybe some of you have seen in my other videos. Old city grids just buried, and then you'll see a mine. I think this is another natural park. Uh, I think I visited it on accident. I didn't really realize what it was at that time. It's called like something really weird like Majestic Mountains or something. But now I find just nothing but gold. Just gold everywhere. Look at, look at those veins too. Like it's right next to these veins. It looks like of land. And then sometimes you zoom in and you see, well, you know, maybe some of those landmarks are from, like, how else do you know gold is there, right? Unless someone has been there to test that. Some of these dots, I just don't even see where there's a building. I'm starting to find zinc and lead. And then in this, another area, I find... Uh, coal you know as if like a bunch of wood got burned or something but it's just amazing how many mines there are and you know is this where people went out to go find the gold you know like down there that's Perth I think right to the to the bottom left or something and then top left was Darwin. And I really haven't studied the east side. But, it, yeah, you see, you see the evidence. Everything that we saw so far doesn't really add up to what they tell us. What's new?